what up what up what up this is mike the philosopher here with another one from put a ring on it okay we're getting close to the finale here i believe this is the finale and uh then we got a reunion after this so without further ado i'm not gonna hold you let's just go in when we came into the process, I literally was just like, all fingers pointed at Jason. But I have realized that there's some things that I need to work on as well, but I'm committed. Man. I lost my grandmother and my father. I do wish that Zay would have proposed before my dad passed. Life is like this, yeah. and it hurts. I'm not quite sure if we ready this second. Definitely have to make a decision soon. Are we really? ready to get married. And you're a beautiful woman. I wouldn't Thank be able to you. keep my hands off you. I damn sure can't keep my mm -hmm. hands off you right now. You know what decision you need. Oh, that Ricky will step up. And so that is a fear of mine. What does that mean for our relationship? I want you. Uh, I got to process all of this. What's wrong, Catherine? I know who I want to be with. It's been so in love for a minute now. What's wrong, Catherine? Um, like, I know who I want to be. I'm a little nervous. I'm not even, but I hope you choose to, to ride with me. This is the man that I want to be with. I love it. I can go on and on and on, you know, about how happy I am with our progress, even though we're not where we want to be, but we're very serious about where we're going. So. What is one thing you learned from her journey with Marcus mm -hmm. that she brought home that was important to her that helped take your relationship to the next level? Listen to her about how her feelings, especially with me trying to get in touch, you know, and be able to express myself, too, because it makes it more easy for her to, like, open up. And Let me say this. Uh, first off, Look, um, I have to say that Catherine, for, first of all, how many of y'all thought that she was going to pick Marcus? I mean, just be real. Put it in the comments. How many of y'all thought she was going to pick Marcus? How many of y'all think she should have picked Marcus? Because I know there are a lot of women out there who would have said, girl, you should have went and picked Marcus. He is the answer to all your worries and all this other stuff. One thing I learned about Catherine is that she's a ride or die. She's a loyal chick. Very attractive to men. She's that she's loyal. She had pretty much every reason to pick Marcus, but she still chose Rick. Now, some people might say she made the wrong choice. I can't necessarily say I agree with that. And the reason why is because uh, you got to remember, she knows Rick. She knows Ricky real well to the point where, um, you know, they've been knowing each other for years. You can't just throw that away. It's not even just a, a love affair. It's a friendship. Okay, so... You can't really just throw that away. Now, I think that at the end of the day, Ricky is going to want to see her happy regardless. It may even still be friends with her. But I, I just think that she's a loyal woman and that she um, has a lot invested in Ricky. Like I said, when it comes to women like that who uh don't necessarily have a father figure in their immediate life or they don't have a family structure uh growing up like Catherine did she had you know a tumultuous time with her mother didn't really know her father for a while your boyfriends become your family so to kind of expect her to uh, pick Marcus over Ricky is really um, surprise. It, it would have been surprising because she adopted Ricky as family. Ricky is family now. He's not just a boyfriend. And that's what I think a lot of women 
don't understand because they don't have those same issues that Catherine has. They don't have family issues. So they're not going to adopt a boyfriend as a family member. You see what I'm saying? But she adopted him as a family member. So it's harder to get rid of Ricky at this point. And um, if I'm being honest, I actually thought she was going to pick Marcus too. So I raised my hand too with y'all. But, um, you know, when I think about it, I say, you know, it makes sense because he's a family member. He's not just a man. And I, I, I guess I, I can't be that surprised because of everything that was involved. And I honestly, I, like I said before, I thought Marcus was just love bombing her anyway. I think that she probably caught wind of that or she, she kind of was getting those same vibes and probably just decided, you know what, Ricky, can, can Marcus deal with Smokey? That's what, that's probably the question she was asking herself. Can Marcus deal with Smokey? Marcus don't take me as a guy that can deal with Smokey. Ricky can deal with Smokey. Okay. There's a totally different dynamic there. So, um, shout out to Catherine, man. She chose Rick. Um, let's go back in and stuff like that like him acknowledging that on his own it's like i can have a million things aligned with any man but the thing that each one of you have right now is the opportunity to try your best to get you right individually so that this can be right regardless as to what you choose i know this journey isn't easy but to see y'all learn with each other and from each other has been amazing so I urge you to think hard about everything you've learned over the past couple of months. As with any major decision, I know it's a lot to sort through. So I want to meet with each of you one-on-one -on -one to help you work through any final thoughts or feelings that may be coming up. You're now in the best place to finally answer the question that you've been asking yourself for a long time. Nice, eh? You look nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the sign. Ooh, thank you, baby. And so tonight I'm gonna take Jazz mom out. I wanna try to get a blessing from her. If I would have proposed to Jazz, man, I just need a little bit more reinsurance. What's that flower you got in your pocket? I don't know. Did you take one of my flowers? Nah, you got all your flowers. Count your stems. <laughs> What's up, booby? Nothing. What's up with you? Uh, you know, just call you up today. See. Yeah. You know, I want to pick your brain a little bit. Ah, you know, I won't talk about me. Let me just say this. Um, Jazz mother loved Jasmine mother, man. Uh, what do you call her? Booby or something like that? Um, she is a cool mother, and she got a, a, a lot of knowledge. And, you know, she was telling Jasmine right when it came to uh, Zay. I think she's team Zay. And, um... I think Zay is doing the right thing here by talking to moms and getting her uh, approval, especially since he kind of missed the opportunity with the father. So, um, you know, uh, next up is moms. And uh, I think it's a smooth move to, you know, give her flowers, get her approval, this, that, and the third. So uh, shout out to Zay for, for doing things the right way. And, uh, Jasmine mother is just lovable, but let's go back in. Dr. Stacy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know she really like, but I think therapy helps anybody. Therapy helps any couple. Me and my husband that passed, we did therapy. We did therapy off and on a couple of times because sometimes communication, even though you might feel like you're communicating good, sometimes you really don't. And uh, African American men don't go to the therapy. Nah. But it's good for you. People have problems, for real. No matter how much you think that they don't. But I'm just sitting here looking like, wow. They, everything that is not going to be straight line, black and white. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a curve right here. Mm -hmm. As long as you get back on that path, mm -hmm. that would matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you want to pick my brain about? So what's your insights on if I, how would you feel about that? Why haven't you done it? Why did you do the promise ring instead of, um... Oh, you're going to go there. 
Yeah, like if you wanted to get married, why you just didn't get married? Because with... it wasn't time then. Oh, okay. Okay. It wasn't. You know, all this, the sessions that we done took made me realize a lot of imperfection of myself. Mm -hmm. So, had we would have just jumped the gun back then when I first got that ring, mm -hmm. you know, we probably would have done a divorce then. Mm -hmm. So, are you thinking about asking Jack to marry? No, the decision is just like, I mm -hmm. can't tell you. Oh. You're going to be, I bet, 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 bet. Oh, I, I can just, tell her. I can keep a secret told, from that's her. That's why I told her I came to pick your brain. Well, I hope y'all do get married too. This woman is my all. Jam is definitely my soulmate, but I just kept prolonging and making excuses to myself. Time just kept going, and sometimes my feet get cold. And when they about to thaw out again, they freeze back up. But right now, I feel like after all this work that both of us done on ourselves, pretty much melted the rest of the ice that was on my feet. You think you're ready? I know it's probably gonna be pretty intense. I know how I feel and I'm pretty close to my decision of what I wanna do. How has this process been for you? Very enlightening. Mm -hmm. Explain, tell me how. A, a lot of times like with the explosion and stuff, I didn't understand why we were going through this. Mm -hmm. And that, Meaning that, when she would blow up. Because mm -hmm. that really did worry me. So how are you all dealing with that now? Um, I think we're doing a great job with it. I've been seeing a lot of accountability. She really trying and working hard, but we all not perfect. Dealing with anger and all of that, those type of things. But at the end of the day, as much as she says, Smokey is to bed, what we do know, the pop-off might happen. Don't myself. Ricky, I push because I want both of you to be healthy individually right. and healthy together. You know that. I hear what Dr. Stacy saying is that it's not always gonna be peace and being with Catherine, but she's working on control and smoking. And I really see the difference. That's what makes me feel, you know, good about where we're going. What do I always say? Three people. Right. You, Catherine, and the relationship. This person over here has to be a hundred percent to really make this work in a healthy romantic relationship. Plenty of folks get married and ain't healthy. You do have to think about what you're saying, but I'm still more married. I know it's not gonna be easy, but I don't think anything that you want like that, that's gonna be great, it's gonna be easy. What so. you just said, your vision of marriage is y'all, it's hard, and we are gonna just work through the hardness. That's the truth of what you're walking into, right. if you decide to do that. Right. That's a hard life mm -hmm. from where I sit, mm -hmm. because although you both are amazing people, and can possibly make this amazing, this needs to be more amazing. But no, I, don't, I, I, I definitely understand. And I think, I think one thing that makes me do that is because we've known each other for so long. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's not typical for a woman to be with a man while he's really trying to grow in certain aspects. A lot who are amazing women who are willing to work with men who have dreams because they have dreams that are not actualized as well, right? Let's let's make it in perspective. Catherine is willing to, uh, to from your reality, mm -hmm. work with Ricky. Then because of that, you're willing to marry her. Yeah. Okay. So, knowing the givens are what they are, do you feel that you all have enough separately? as individuals to make this work. I do. I do. Yeah. I am serious about marrying her. I'm not knowing what I'm walking into with this last session with Dr. Stacey, but I'm just ready to let her know where I'm at and also to thank her because she has helped me a lot in this process. What a journey, right? <laughs> yes, it is a journey.
So tell me, where are you today? How do you feel about this whole process? Just focusing on the individual. You better come on with the individual, <laughs> huh? I learned, there... and we're going to talk about my, my yes. individual right yes. now, because yes. I've affected my relationship a lot. Um, personally, I've seen, even in this process, um, how I've affected it in negative ways. And tell so, me how. Let's talk um, through it. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest takeaway was definitely confronting my other person, which is Smokey. The biggest thing in your communication, I would say don't criticize. Got you. The always, you never. Why, Ricky, you do this? Why you do it like that? So affirm him and then speak your truth. When this happened, this is how I feel. It's about how this happened. He feels like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do this with Kat. I don't want to mess things up. I love her. And I, but you want that man to tell you how he feels. In my growth, I'm seeing too that Ricky is not my past and I don't have to treat him like that. This process is very humbling, but it's also very empowering. I feel confident that me and Ricky are walking away with the best things for both of us. Do you think that both of you are ready to be together married? Um, where we are, yes. Where you are right now, yes. tell me why. I've already asked myself the question, like, if nothing about Ricky ever changes, I'm okay with that. And my okay. answer is yes. But you got to work on Catherine, baby, okay? As you and Ricky are challenged with so many things, spiritually, physically, everything is a challenge. Once God confirms it in my heart, which he has, I don't really need to hear from nobody else. I feel like I'm very ready to be a wife and to be married. I'm just a whole new woman in a whole new space. And Ricky is like a whole new man. And like, I love the idea of being next to that person and growing towards marriage. You gonna say, in my incompleteness, as challenging as our relationship is, this dynamic, I still feel I can be a wife? I ain't gonna fight that, right? Yeah. Okay, you see what I'm saying? But what I'm gonna tell you is, Yeah, look, um, Catherine is a good woman and, you know, she do have to deal with Smokey. Smokey, I think, a, <laughs> I think a lot of women have a Smokey in them and, um, particularly sisters have a lot of Smokey because they had to have one to survive in today's, uh, black culture black societies for the most part so they had to have that that rough uh you know exterior smoky to give their man the business i mean it just is what it is um but i thought i wish i wish the doc would really the only thing i would i mean i th first of all dr stacy is doing an excellent job right i just wish she would hone in more on Ricky and what his real issue is, which is marriage phobia. I just feel like the guy is marriage phobic and I don't feel like she tapped into that with Ricky enough. I mean, it's all about feelings and all about, you know, um, you know, Catherine getting over Smokey and where we are in our relationship but it's never laser focused on his marriage phobia okay I think it's a marriage phobia maybe it's just me maybe I'm wrong maybe you know I'm not the doctor so but that's what I see in Rick and I, I just wish she would have talked uh, Dr. Stacy would have talked more to Ricky about his marriage phob phobic ways because that really seems to be his issue and I think he do love you know um Catherine and all that I just sometimes I just feel like he's kind of um he well not kind of he he does have cold feet um who knows if he's gonna propose though we'll see let's go back in Hey, 
Jason. How you doing? All right, how good are you? Good to see you, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Today, um, I'm meeting with Joy's dad, uh, Winston. He's been married 41 years. And just to top it up with him and get that, that wisdom, it means a lot. Uh, my dad passed away at 48, and I'm looking at Winston, you know, my dad would be around the same age, and I was like, damn, you know, it'd be cool just to have that that man-to-man -man girl. That's my baby know, girl. That's your baby girl. Mm -hmm. You know how much I love Joya. You know, Joya and I have been, been talking with the relationship coach. Um, okay. And she's been putting us through this process that's been very challenging to see where we are and see if we're ready to get married and move to the next level. Are you ready? I feel I feel I'm getting close to it. I mean, you and Ms. Joy have been married how many years? 41 years. 41 years. Man, that's a beautiful thing. Communication is key. You want to do things your way. She wants to do things her way. It's up to the man to figure out a way to compromise. Right. Thank you. So my question is, what is the timeline mm -hmm. for you guys as far as having another child? I feel like, you know, engagement, marriage, babies, house. I said, like, let's one step at a time, right? Mm-hmm. This is the decision you have to make. When two people want to get married, you have to have two people that want to play the same game by the same rules, with no substitutions, and no time limit. I hear Winston, but uh, starting over, having a new baby right now, I think first things first, we have to get engaged. So we're getting down to it, and I have some really big decisions to make, and 14 grandkids, one great grand, but only one from Joya. Yeah. So, now, let me say this. And by the same rules, house. I said, like, look. Now, let me say this. Uh, Joya Pops is mad cool, right? Um, a part of me feel like maybe they are applying a little pressure to Joya to get married and have another kid. I know her... 11 year old son is pressuring her to have another kid so she's getting pressure from her loved ones to have another child and sometimes this pressure is not always in your face it could be very subtle it could be very subtle like her sisters have multiple kids or her brothers or whoever and, you know, she start to just feel like she need to have another child. It, it could be very subtle, even if even if the parents are not applying full court pressure on her, she could start to feel the pressure. And this is why I think Joya is really um, got all this pressure on herself to get married, to have this kid, to to all, all these all these check marks because she's looking at her family and and her son well her son is her family but I'm saying she's getting some um, visible pressure and probably some subtle pressure from her family and she's starting to feel in that and she's putting that on Jasha. Um, so I I kind of understand better how she got here as far as her process, her, her processing and, and, and her thoughts on her wanting to have kids and wanting to get married and all this other stuff, especially since I'm, you know, just seeing her father. Um, it, it, it's kind of making sense as to why. I mean, it did before when she said her 11 year old son wanted her to have another child it made all the sense in the world then but now that i've seen her father i can kind of see where some subtle pressure will come in at with her family i didn't know she had these siblings and they had all these kids and she only has one her her father mentioned that well yeah joya and she only got one that's what he said something similar to that so i i, I just rewound it just a little bit because i wanted to hear it again from him and he also drops a jewel 
okay when he speaks to J uh Jaisha about how a marriage should go and he said it should be um you know the same rules you know you're going by the book you got to do it the same way that was that was a jewel I, I i didn't want to get away from us so i rewound it a little bit so we can re-listen to that but let's go in one step at a time right mm -hmm. this is the decision you have to make when two people want to get married you have to have two people that want to play the same game same game by the same rules same rules with no substitutions and no time limit i hear winston that same game same rules is super key that is a super dope jewel he just dropped um i agree with him and i don't think a lot of people get that some people want to go into a different game playing different rules some people want to go in playing a different game with the same rules some people want to go in playing the same game with different rules you got to play the same game with the same rules same rules there has to be an understanding from day one about expectations entitlements maybe even gender roles there has to be all of this stuff lined out so that you don't you don't have no issues later on you know and and you know shame accountability even praise all of that stuff is included with what you do okay if i don't do my job I'm a, I'm gonna feel guilt and shame as a man. And I don't even need my woman to to say a word to me. Like if I'm not providing, I'm gonna automatically feel guilt and shame as a man. And I don't need my woman could say nothing to she could even be encouraging to me. But I know the game I'm in. I know the rules of that game. So I'm going to feel that shame and I should feel that shame so that I can get back on the horse and take care of business. The women need to do the same thing. If you're not handling your business as a woman, you need to feel that shame and that guilt too to get back on that horse and correct whatever it is that you're you're missing. And I... A lot of women don't have no guilt or no shame in doing anything these days. I mean, that's just my that's just my observation from what I've seen. I've seen a lot. Um, but you got to get play the same game with the same rules. And you have to have the same accountability. And not think just because you're a man or you're a woman, you're exempt from taking care of your duties. It don't work like that. So I thought that was a jewel he dropped. That's why I had to rewind it, but let's go back in. But uh, starting over having a new baby right now, I think first things first, we have to get engaged. So we're getting down to it and I have some really big decisions to make and 14 grandkids, one great grand, but only one from Joya. Yeah, so that pressure. complain about nothing. I wouldn't even if I could, though. You wouldn't even. <laughs> Dr. Stacy is like <laughs> heaven sent because I feel you know you're wrong when you're wrong. We have grown so much in this process, but I still have my doubts. So I'm interested to, you know, meet with Dr. Stacy this last time and see what she has to say. So we're mm. approaching the end. <sighs> How you feeling? 
I don't know. It's like a lot of mixed feelings, to be honest. I want us to talk about you as the individual first, and then we'll go to the relationship part. Where are you with that? I came into this thinking he's the problem, mm -hmm. you know? But you opened my eyes to understand that I'm the problem, too. Honestly, I thought that, like, arguing wasn't a... You know, you know what I noticed? It's just, it's just funny. I think that practically... <laughs> practically all the women walked into this thinking it was the man's fault I think I heard Joya say that I just heard Jazz say that um, I think even Catherine said that um, they all walked into it thinking it was their dude's fault um, but one, one thing I would give them all credit for is that all the women seeing the error in their own ways so kudos to the women this was a learning experience for all of them but i think even the women probably i don't want to say they've taken away the most out of this experience and situation but um it's good that they are able to look outside of themselves and see their own errors in their own ways um as far as the guys uh you know i think that they are doing that too i think um i really think zay really probably came the furthest as far as understanding himself the best or yeah, understanding himself more than what from where he was. I don't think Jasha was a bad guy from the beginning. So I don't I don't I don't think he had to learn much about himself. I think he had to learn more from his woman, which is Joya. He had to learn some things about her and her love language. I think that was the biggest takeaway from him. And he learned how, you know, valuable she was to him. So, but him internally, I don't think he had a whole lot of corrections to do. Uh, I just think he needs to understand his situation better. Um, as far as Ricky, I don't, I think he learned some things, but I think a lot of his fears is getting in the way of his growth. So, um, I think he's walking away from this situation uh learning more about you know himself Catherine and she's and she's capable of you know getting other men but I just feel like he um the fear he has of of marriage and and the fear of you know, being legally tied to her after he done went through a, uh, probably a pretty bad divorce, uh, got him like not uh, changing a whole bunch about emotionally where he's where he is. Emotionally, he don't seem much different to me. He he really don't. He may he may know some things logically and, and, and knowledge wise and, and knowledge based but emotionally I don't see him moving any different than what he was when he first got on the show but all that being said let's go in a part of the relationship I know couples have this situations arguing didn't exist arguing that's healthy because that means that you are human and he is human and you all being two different people coming from two different places a disagreement yes. but how you handle that disagreement mm. is the most important thing so if anything wow. i really want you to know that if that's healthy you can i know remember. now <laughs> that was big yeah. That was really big. Yeah. Being able to express yourself to your partner is one of the greatest things ever. And I'm just so fortunate to be in this process with Zay, being able to communicate effectively. This man might possibly ask you to marry him. Oh. <sighs> he is considering through this process that it may happen. Where are you with that? Out of 100%, I am still 
50-50. He has to show me at this point. This has been a topic of conversation when that sentence came about. And then he brings it up in front of the people. And he talks about, oh, I'm going to marry her, da, 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 but it never happened. Oh, I'm mad at myself. I should have did it when your dad was living. Oh, I should have did it when your grandmother was living. And I'm like, nobody stopped that but you. You know, so now it's just, I don't know. I don't want you to stop believing, though, but it seems like you are not even... It's disheartening getting your mind wrapped around it to get let down. If your boyfriend brings up marriage, like, more than five times, but then never proposes, then you would feel a way too. Like, I am not a can of peas. I am milk. I will spoil just sitting here. I think I'm already damn spoiled. You're an amazing woman, and I just wish... Love Jasmine, man. She keeps it real all the time. Keeps it 100. Uh, I think secretly she's my favorite. Um, I, re I really rock with Jazz. I just like her... I mean, I just like her whole mentality and setup, but I have to say... If she's 50-50, <laughs> why are y'all on the show? The show is called Put a Ring on It. Who's applying the pressure? Is it Zay or is it Jazz? I don't know who's applying the pressure. It don't seem to be her. She like, I'm 50-50. You talk to Zay, he was like, uh, I, you know. I, who's applying the pressure? put a ring on it I, I don't know that just seemed kind of weird to me if she's only 50 50 why 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 does she feel like they needed to show now i know that they were kind of pulled into the show because the the other couple left due to some dramatic exit or whatever the guy had a nervous breakdown or whatever on camera and 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 they left so they had to pull zay and uh jasmine in but i'm not even sure if jasmine and zay really was applying the pressure to be on this show so it is what it is but um all that being said i, I know they needed a quick replacement they got it with jasmine and zay but um Let's just see how it turns out, I guess. Whatever the future has for you, I wish you love and light. I appreciate that, Dr. Stacy. I appreciate it. All right, so it's time for Jazz Garrett to go out and date with me. I came into this talking about Zay not listening and Zay not hearing me, but I realized through the process that I wasn't listening 100% to Zay. I do understand I have control in ways. I've admitted that to you, Dr. Stacey. It seems like you are both taking ownership for your independent roles in the relationship. It really opened me up, and it's me, too, learning how to listen. Then you know, just take what I think I hear. Oh, wow. Thank you. I was in, oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Candlelight, the whole city skyline. It was amazing. I was like, wow, he really pulled one on me this time. Sky. Turn into blue. This is so beautiful. I am so glad that we got a chance to go on it. <laughs> I was telling like, when I'm going to go out with my woman? You know, yeah. I've been out with all these women, listening to how they feel, telling them how I feel. When I get to go out with you? So going out on a date with you, it had to be spectacular. This is nice. He created a space, a safe space, no distractions, no cell phones, no other people. Moving, people going. But I got your full attention. Yeah, you definitely got that. I feel like through this process, for me, the biggest thing that I wanted you to grasp is communicate with me. Yeah. You're human. And also, keep in mind that everything that you do reflects me, whether it means to or not. 
One of the lows for me in this journey was Zay's date with Nia. You definitely Girl. pretty, no disrespect to my lady, but you pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Kinda ante up, you know, you know. <laughs> okay, sometimes he makes me feel as if he's missing out on something by being with me. I didn't really actually listen to me and actually communicate. Dang, I don't want you feeling like that I was wrong. Not putting nobody on no scale is better than you. Stop. If I would have knew you felt like that, I would just say, hey, yeah, next day, right then and there. Every day not going to be a perfect day. Yeah. Every day not going to be my day. Every day not going to be your day. Mm -hmm. But at every day, at that moment, we're going to know that we got each other. So that's what I learned. Yeah. And, you know, you've done a lot better with talking to me. One of my highest points was learning to listen to my woman and how she really feel. And it ain't always just a one-way street how I feel about something. You to look over at her without anything and say no, but it's not just you. That is huge. I just want you to put me first, you know? You... That, that would come with, you know, the direction we're going. You gotta be first, everybody else second. During the years that we dated, you, you played with me a lot when it came to marriage. It was like a seesaw like this. A lot, you know? Yeah, I was horrible with Kameran came before these therapy sessions. Yeah. I was horrible. Yeah. And you didn't leave. Why would I? I People leave all the time. But you stayed. He all the way down into the city. Oh, come on. Like the penthouse view. What in the world? <laughs> Hey, we're talking about this amazing view around huh? Look at all of the sunflowers. That is so pretty. Oh. See the skyline, you know? This was so sweet of you. Well, you deserve it. Guys, you can get the curtains for me. Say this all the time. Hey, why would you do we got a proposal. Hey, on top of the it was <laughs> What you gonna do? <laughs> hmm? You serious? I can't be no more serious than I am right nah, now. Nah, he just kidding. Hang in here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know some big rocks now. Yes. Yes, I will. And you kept my ring. <laughs> I had to keep that ring. Papa seen it. Gigi seen it. <laughs> oh. I've never been engaged in my life. <laughs> Me either. Some flowers end up facing the sun, but they go through a lot of dirt to find their way. Oh my God. Papa. Thinking about being a wife, you know, a nurturer, is scary. But being able to communicate with you, seeing all the effort and the details you put into the proposal, I have no doubt in my mind that I said yes to the right person. Like, you really are the missing piece to my puzzle. You know, I'm willing to go over and beyond on this planet and off this planet for you. You my everything. You my world. Let me get some. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. You bagged the cutie. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> she killed me with that dolphin laugh. Um, first of all, I got to say, jazz is definitely wifey material. Um, so, Zay, you're a lucky guy. Uh, I, I, I just like the way that Jasmine thinks. Um, her logic is, 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 at a, is at a pretty high nine or 10. Um, and she is, uh, you know, he said, you never left. And she said, why would I? He said, people leave all the time. That's real, real talk, you know? So, um, you could tell that that meant a lot to him and that's probably why he did he was hesitant to propose at first because 
you know people left him before now let's remember Zay had a very low woman EQ he had a very low uh, uh, woman IQ too so <laughs> I can see why he would be gun shy because women were probably leaving him left and right because he just wasn't catching the clue um but you know he rocked out with jazz and she didn't leave that was important to him that was important to him and he said you know what she I, even though we went through all of this she didn't leave she the one this my this my queen right here and um I think he got a good one and I think that she got a good guy Zay is a good guy he learned a lot about himself he pushed through it you know he was understanding enough to go through this situation and this you know therapy for the most part and um you know what I, I think you, you can qualify to fly a plane my brother okay Okay, I think your communication skills is up to par now. You bagged a, a, a wifey because um, she she is a wife. And, uh, she, you know, uh, I'm happy for both of them. Uh, very, very happy for both of them. And uh, I think that they're both great people. So, uh, you know, shout out to Jazz and Zay on the first proposal. Let's go. Okay. A romance is definitely in the room. It's intimate. It's just us. Like, what's next? Is he mm -hmm. going in tonight? I'm a little nervous, a little mixed emotions, but confident at the end of the day. And so, hopefully, I can really show her a good night tonight and just let her know how I feel. I see so much growth in you. I see so much growth in me. So, cheers to growth. It's cheers to growth. And to the beginning of a new chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been a tough process, but I'm happy with where we are because now I get stuff like this and it feels normal. <laughs> okay. well, I just want you to enjoy the night, you know, let you know how I feel and how special you are to me. You see it. Yeah. I will say, like, what do you feel like was your saddest moment in this process? <sighs> Saddest moment was, you know, the stress level, I guess, at one point. When I'm showing this commitment in this area, and then you sit here and say, well, she won't give me that type of space. When you know for a fact, I've encouraged you going and doing stuff with your friends without me. Like, I don't like that. I'm not about to listen when you about to lie. That's about to piss me off. So you, can't... I can tell you, you never took in your son another damn practice bull****. And for you to sit here and lie, that's crazy. Even with Smokey showing up, for me, seeing how problematic that is, especially how problematic it can be as far as affecting my relationship, definitely helped me really over me, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely proud of you on that. The low for me was realizing that I had become verbally abusive in my relationship. I don't like hurting you at all, Ricky. Like, you are my best friend. Like, I don't like the stuff that I say to you, and I don't like when we're arguing. I'm really, really serious about making my relationship work with you, so, like, we can't do this. I will forever cherish Smokey, but she's just not welcome in this relationship, okay. you know? Me seeing you, like, really open up about your traumatic things that happened to you, that's a brave thing. A lot of people can't do, though. Yeah. I really do believe in you and love you and trust you, and seeing you getting better, you know? Such so you. My favorite thing that I got out of this process is probably help with like expressing myself to you. I used to do some of the stuff that she did. I've been there where, you know, insecurities, um, a lot of stuff and I, I'm not the same no more. I feel like a brand new honeymoon stage. <laughs> I definitely do feel like we're in a brand new honeymoon stage. Yeah. Hearing how you feel about me and how you've expressed yourself, you know, because you're now in a space where you're more vocal. Yeah, I found out it works a little bit. Well, don't stop. No problem. Because that's definitely feeling the commitment, and I think that's what I really, really wanted. I'm just in a good space right now. Mm. Like, I'm out with my man. Good. What about you? I'm feeling good, man. I'm excited for us. Mm -hmm. 
I'm excited for our futures. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you. I'm on cloud nine. Okay. You know how I like that. As far as like moving forward with me and you, what I want to do, I just love you so much. All right, so I know, you know, um, it's been back and forth. And um, I definitely think that like moving forward, you know, we should just. <clears throat> So, I know, you know, I definitely think that, like, moving forward, you know, <clears throat> we should just, you know, hold off on the engagement. Um, even though with all of us, you know, saying everything that we said, I think we still need to hold off. And um, I don't want to get engaged with us still trying to tune up this machine we making. We found some problems. We need to learn about each other a little bit better. We still got some transitioning because she's still fairly new out here. Marriage is a big deal. You know, I think we, we, we do have real things that we need to work on. Before this process, before anybody got in our business, Ricky told me if I made the move here to show my commitment, he would do what he needs to do to show his commitment. And he did not. And so I cannot take him serious in that regard like mm. I once did. And walking mm. away not engaged leaves me with a lot to think about. We came here to really see if we was ready to get married and engaged. We took it real serious. And I think it takes a lot of maturity for us to look at ourselves and our highlights and be like, nah, we ain't ready for the championship yet. Hopefully you decide to stick it out with me. <laughs> if, you know, if not, you feel like it's best when you know I'm always behind you. Life where I feel, I'm not sure what our future holds. And so I cannot sit and act like it's gonna be perfect. Cause I just, you know, all fairy tales don't give you the ending that you want. I do feel like I spoke my truth. And you know, for me, I am ready to get married. And so it's just like disappointing. All right, so we got one proposal and one non-proposal strike one okay i how many of y'all surprised by this i can't necessarily say i'm surprised by this um and just because they don't get engaged today don't mean they don't won't get engaged in the future sometime soon it just means that they're not ready today. But like I said before, I wish the doc would have talked to Ricky more about his marriage phobia because I think that, uh, hold on, uh, my bad. <laughs> anyway, I think that's, that's where the problem is. I think that Ricky is just too uh, marriage phobic for his own good and I wish the doc would have addressed that more with him because it's going to be harder for him to go forward until he addresses that and it didn't seem like that that was emphasized enough in this process it just wasn't emphasized by the doc enough um I'm not even sure if they're aware of his marriage phobia. Uh, and he's not really making it well known. So he's not really, um, you know, coming forward with much of that as being his issue. Now, I could be wrong. I, you know, I could be wrong. Um, maybe he's not marriage phobia. Maybe he's just not real willing to risk it with Catherine I don't know but I think he's marriage phobia phobic and I think that whatever he went through with his ex-wife was devastating to him he don't want to go through that again and when he see Catherine pull out Smokey it brings back some 
horrific memories to him. I bet you that's what's going on with Rick. So why would I marry a woman who I just divorced? I just divorced a woman just like that. Why would I jump into a marriage with a woman like that? You know, so um, I can't necessarily say I'm surprised by this. I wish the doc would have talked more about Ricky, about his marriage phobic uh, tendencies. And I wish that they would have addressed his last relationship more. Um, But I see Catherine doing her part in this and I seen her really go 10 toes down even though she dated Marcus for four times or whatever I think that she really um, was dedicated to the process I think I think I think uh, Ricky was too but I just think that he they never really got to the bottom of what his real problem was unfortunately and I think that's why they missed the opportunity of them getting engaged because uh, he's still he's still battling with the same problem he walked into this process with and that's his marriage uh, phobic uh, tendencies uh, because of his divorce but anyway let's go back in better and like you know try to uh have more patience too as well with you and you know not in understanding me and and like the fact that you were saying you want to be more feminine now and loving feminine yeah. and oh my god is this this is for us Come over here. <laughs> oh my gosh i have not taken joy on a picnic and I know that's something she likes to do. So I've been taking a lot of notes and made it something special that was just for her. Got you some pink roses this time. Boy, you are just... <laughs> what? More flowers. 90% of signs of aging are caused by the sun. Discover Anthelios Ultra Light Sunscreen by La Roche-Posay. Make your cookout stand out with Heinz Craft Singles and Oscar Mayer. to take me on a picnic so many times and he finally heard me he's finally listening and it couldn't be any better the attention of detail that you have been putting into things is overwhelming Uh, this process is no joke for sure it's been an exciting roller coaster it's the ups and downs one of the biggest challenges i think for me when you were on a date with Brittany, I was like, in my feelings. Fist up more. Fist up. Yeah. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like seeing the love of my life with his hand. Right. How do you feel right now in this process after coming through all that? I've learned a lot about you. I've learned a lot about my communication with you. I think about where I was day one. Mm-hmm. I was pointing the finger at you the whole time. That's one thing I had up learned too, is just, you know, getting out of my ego and just really hearing and understanding. <laughs> Again, she said, I was pointing the finger at you the whole time. I told y'all, it's like all the women walked into this thinking that they man was the problem. Um, but like I said before, they grew from it. All, all of the women grew from it and they realized the error in their own ways. I'm not going to beat that dead horse, but uh, I, I just had to point that out. Let's go in. And, you know, the love language and how you want to be loved. Like, this process is no joke. Some of the stuff that I've been working on kind of in the past or kind of aware of, but didn't know how to express it. It just hurts to hear sometimes. Like, it's like I never do something. You know what I'm saying? Language is power, which, you know, but I can get better. These things are challenging and they're tough conversations and relationships. You know, I kept talking about what I don't have. I don't have the ring. I don't have the marriage. I don't have the baby. Mm -hmm. But 
all of what I was saying and doing was coming from a place of control and not ever taking into account what you want. I realized that in this relationship, control is not the way to go. Dr. Stacy told me like, I'm creating all these narratives about the future and I'm not really living in the present. I'm like, oh, I need a baby today because of this and that's and this. And she's like, this relationship and I don't want to get out of flow anymore. We have grown so much from day one. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I'm emotional because I've been asking for this for a long time. And it's like the growth that we've experienced in this process, I'm finally getting it. And I'm seeing you show up as the man I always knew you could be. I only want the ring because I want the man and I only want the baby because I want the man. It's like, at the end of the day, I just want Jaysha no matter what. But if I have to choose, I guess I'll take the ring because I want the man. I'm amazed the amount of- <sighs> Really? Um, I don't know. It sounds good. It sounds good, you know. I, I'm not I'm not necessarily sold on the idea that she would take Jaysha over a baby. I still think that that's a big priority. But now that she knows she's going to get the baby, she can say this now that I'll take the man over the baby. Um, I'm not necessarily buying it, but it sounds good. Uh, you know, um, but let's see if we get another proposal let's go in kind of like effort and detail that you've put into just making making my life special i feel like the process has helped you to understand my love language a lot better it has and i love you and we want to be speaking the same language <laughs> you know <laughs> gotta be in a relationship gotta speak the same lingo you know, you know, and I was talking about, let's not say what we don't have, you know? No. Because there is no lack. You know, we have everything we need. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got each other. You know, everything else is going to be an addition to us, you know? We're never without, you know? You're never going to be without my love, you know? Yeah, you know, I can go on and on talking about how you made me feel and just to see your face light up, you know, when we were out there in Mexico singing songs and, you know, and dancing. dancing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, our song, what was that song? Was it uh, Tim's? Who was that whiz kid or who was that? You don't need no other body. That one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Only you can yeah. hold my... Is that music? What the hell? You know our song, what was that song? Was it uh, Tim's? Who was that Wiz Kid or who was that? You don't need no other. Is that music? So yeah. Hey, hey, hey. What the hell? What is happening? If ever we are in a bad mood or I'm down, we turn on this song and it's like an anchor for our love for each other, the trips that we've taken together, the experiences that we've had. This song is a representation of our relationship. When you first met, you changed mine too. And I wanna ask, Will you push to be my smoothie queen? <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> you will? Yes. I love you so much, babe. <laughs> So much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank y'all. Thank you. <laughs> you see that? Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at my fingers. It's not naked anymore. It's not naked. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
と思う。You are amazing. What? <laughs> What just happened? You did so good. I was just excited about the picnic. <laughs> Not even these. Have those. <laughs> you put a ring on it. Yes, you definitely put a ring on it. Really? You and me. Forever. Forever. <sighs> Beyonce. <laughs> Joy. Officially. Next week on the Put a Ring on It season four reunion, Doctor Stacy honestly gave me sexy back at the honeymoon. Hi. <laughs> Never in the history of Put a Ring on It have we had a couple wind up exactly where they started. I'm still broken in some areas. Then that type of person doesn't try to collaborate with another person in marriage. Did your desire to marry Zay waver at any point in this process? Um, is it? Yes. I was told that it's kind of in communication and emotions. It just seems like you just either are not invested, or it seems like you're embarrassed, or it seems like you're not happy because you're not saying nothing at all. Ricky's a grown man; he can speak for himself. He has a mouth, just the same mouth that you put fish in. He can open it up and speak. You're a very intelligent woman, right? Yes. So if you know, if, as a as a woman growing up, you know it's a less likelihood for you to be successful by having a child. Using condoms, you getting pregnant? Then all right, cool. Maybe I shouldn't continue having this child because I'm not, I, I'm not getting married. You're speaking of me. I built myself to basically have better choices. Catherine, I got something for you. What are we? Are you lay off? I'm gonna just hand this over to you. Wow. So the saga is not over. <laughs> First, let me address the whole. Jaysha, Joya thing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, I, in a previous episode, I said that uh, I thought Marcus, I mean, uh, Jaysha and Zay was going to propose and I wasn't sure of Ricky and uh, I was pretty much 100% on with how this was going to end up. So, pat on my own back. I was right about it, but not a big deal. I'm sure a lot of people was probably right, right along with me. Um, you know, got to give it up to Jason, man. You real smooth with it. I, I like how you done everything, man. I mean, I would have done uh, things very similar. Like I said to me and Jason kind of had the same energy. So I understand this brother and how he moves uh, a little bit better than probably the other two guys so um i'm i'm pretty much in that jaysha class uh and how and how i move um obviously there's differences but uh not too many differences um i kind of see eye to eye with this guy took her to the picnic you know what i mean um brung up her favorite song had that playing on the radio you know, had the audience out there, had the picnic out in the open. Uh, obviously, had some help somewhere, um, and uh, bust out the the look like a pearl, a uh, pear cut, pear shaped diamond ring. Kudos on that. Uh, looked like a very nice ring. Uh, she, you know, she, Joya was eating it up, rightfully so. And it was it was a very dope proposal. Uh, when I proposed to my wife or now ex-wife, uh, it was pretty dope too. You know, uh, I would say to all the guys, if you're thinking about proposing, make it very memorable. Um, they will remember those proposals uh, and sort of brag on those proposals. So didn't keep us married but <laughs> but it was um it was still a dope proposal that i did i kind of took her on a, a bit of a scavenger hunt and stuff like that but it, you know it, it ended up uh a pretty pretty dope experience um she still kind of remembered she does remember that she won't ever forget that i was the only real proposal she she got that actually went to marriage but anyway um 
nice season, dope season. Um, I'm happy for Jasmine and Zay, uh, Jaysha, Joya. Um, I'm even happy for Ricky and, and Catherine uh, because they got further along of understanding each other than they did before. So there's still progress there, even though it didn't end in a proposal, it's still progress. People need to recognize that. Um, I am interested to know how this whole thing with uh, Marcus at the reunion is going to go. I mean, is this guy going to sit up here and propose to Catherine? That's what I want to know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what was that all about? OK, because it looked like he was going to propose. They made it seem like he was going to propose to Catherine at the reunion. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, Jacoby, <laughs> he know he a high value man. And, uh, you know, he telling Joya, look, you know, you ain't on my level. This, that, and the third. I thought that <laughs> that was crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, dope season. Uh, and you know, pretty much like I said, all of all the proposals happened the way I thought they were going to happen. Uh, and that was that. Hit the like, share, and subscribe. All right, and we will be back next week to check out this reunion because I have a feeling this is going to be very entertaining. Anyway, hit the like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. You're a very intelligent woman, right? Yes. So if you know, if, as, a, as a woman growing up, you know it's a less likelihood for you to be successful by having a child. Using condoms, you're getting pregnant, then all right, cool, maybe I shouldn't continue having this child because I'm not, I, I'm not getting married. You're speaking of me. I built myself to basically have better choices. Catherine, I got something for you. What are we, are, are you way off? <laughs> I'm gonna just hand this over to you.